friends, it's your girl Tanya with the Nine. Welcome back to my channel. Today is a special day. What day is it? It's my birthday! Today I turn you don't need to know and none of your business, okay? Alright, we're celebrating my birthday. We are in a beautiful Mexico in a pandemic. <laughs> but don't judge me, okay? This is a big birthday for me. So I want to celebrate it right. And I'm bringing you along with me, okay? So you ready? Get set, go! This is the hotel. It is called Olio Cancun Playa. I think I said it right. Uh, this is the big ass driveway that we drive up to. Uh, this is the building where our hotel room is in. Everything is so beautiful and nice. Okay, so let's talk about the hotel a little bit. The rooms are really nice. They're classic white and everything like that. Um, my favorite part of the hotel is the mattress. That mattress is fire. O M to the G. I love it. The pillows are nice. They're small, but they're comfortable. But that mattress is everything. Like my back feels great. Um, I realized how, how much more bougie I am now. Uh, the maid came in and made our beds and I like coming home to a maid bed you know I normally don't make my bed but <laughs> I like it when someone else makes my bed if you know what I mean okay so we'll talk about food a little bit we're gonna go by the pool all right alrighty this is the pool okay so they have a pool bar or swim up bar, whatever you want to call it. Alrighty. And then some of my people. Well, now they're not my people, but you know what I mean. And then they have a little other part to it and everything. Yes, yes. And then. All right, sorry about that. So my friend, our, our server Raul, he was here, took care of us all weekend. All righty, and then this is our beach. So this is the entrance to the beach. It has some cabanas down here. And like, guys, like, I'm just in love with this water. Like, ooh, I'm in love with this water. I don't wanna, uh, I'm in love with this water. It's perfect. It's the water for me. It's the water for me. And it wraps right around. So like this entire strip that we're on is straight hotels. So if you see all the way down there, all hotels, all hotels. So you got options when you come. You definitely have options. Okay friends, so this is our room. Look, cleaning lady came in, made our beds. I really, I really like coming to a made bed, <laughs> you know, because your girl's a little lazy. And then this is our living space. Say hey, friend. Hey, you all drunk? She's a little drunk. It's all right though. It's vacation time. All right, and you know what? Another thing I like, I like the sliding door now. They spoiled me. Ooh, look at that slide. I like a good sliding door. Mm -hmm. Then our bathroom. And our tub, yeah, friends, yes, yes, yes. Oh, and we got a balcony, but I can't open the door, but I'm gonna try because it's a little stubborn, <clears throat> friend. Uh, we're gonna come back to the balcony. Hold on, <laughs> okay. I got the balcony door open, and then here is the view from the balcony yes beautiful yes hunty yes hunty yes talk to me nice okay so this is the type of lifestyle i want to be living you feel me i want to be i want to be seen i want to go out take me out okay take me out yes okay friends Birthday, birthday, birthday. Okay, so, um, we're at Tiana Resort. 
I don't know how to say its name, but I'm going to master it eventually. Ole. Ole. Thank you, friend. Ole. Oleo. Oh, oh, Oleo. Playa. Oleo. Ole. Thank you. Oleo. Play. Cancun de Playa. Uh, what she said. I'm bilingual. What she said. Ole Cancun de Playa. I'm going to get it. Ah. I'm going to get it. But anywho, I want to talk to you about some food. Okay. So they have a couple restaurants here or whatever, whatever. They have a snack bar or whatever, whatever. And all week, I guess, we've been eating these fucking fish tacos. These fucking fish tacos. It's popping. All right. So um, I forget the kind of fish it is. But let's just look at it again, okay? So it's some coleslaw with, I think it's like a cilantro, not cilantro, it's um, sriracha, wrong as some sriracha sauce on a tortilla, a corn tortilla. <laughs> and then our, our, our waiter, Raul, he suggested the Valentina hot sauce. So I'm just gonna drizzle, drizzle, drizzle. A little of this hot sauce on there. You ready for the drizzle? The drizzle? Come on, drizzle. Drizzle, yes, honey. <laughs> okay, so I got my drizzle. I'm gonna take a bite before these damn birds eat it for me. And here we go. Cheers to me, my birthday. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. So, it's very moist. It's like. Kind of like cod. Moist like cod, has that same texture, but I don't think it's cod. And it's lightly breaded to golden brown with the corn tortillas with like a little coleslaw. And it's so good. Like, you could. You can honestly taste every piece of cilantro in every bite that I've taken. Ooh. It's been good, friends. Okay. Stay tuned. Got a lot more coming. <laughs> it's my right to say. Hey guys, welcome back. You know, you know, you know. So I decided to take a quick break from showing you all of my fun birthday celebration and have a, a serious conversation with you about how I've been feeling lately. So this is Tanya Talks, okay? All right, so it all began a year ago. On my 29th birthday, I guess I had a realization that I'm going to be 30 in a year time. So I felt it was time for me to get my ducks in a row. You know there were so many things that I wanted to do with my life before I turned 30 I wanted to get a second degree I was hoping to be in a relationship on the verge of marriage you know getting a house all of this stuff I was hoping for before 30 I got nowhere close to any of that you know you know life happens things happen and you just gotta go with the flow so when I turned 29 I vowed to myself that I was going to work towards being somewhat of a productive citizen whatever uh that didn't happen it didn't happen at all so i'm just living my life day by day just taking it as it goes as it flows and all that good stuff so six months before i turned 30 i have a little bit of a breakdown a little bit of a mental breakdown i'm like you know what hey i'm going to be 30 soon and you know life is not how I want it to be and now mind you I put a lot of pressure of myself to be the best I can be I, to be the best daughter the best sister the best friend the best employee the best co-worker the best dad that I can be you know and that slowly put a lot of stress on my subconscious that I didn't realize that I was putting myself through so six months happens boom and as the time, the days go by and the countdown and I'm getting closer and closer and closer to my 30th, I get a little more nervous and anxious and uh, my anxiety. And I've never had anxiety before until I turned, well, until I was getting ready to turn 30. So now my anxiety is all high. 
I'm, I'm, I'm angry all the time. I'm yelling, I'm cursing, I'm crying, I'm being mean, I'm being rude, I'm doing all of these things that I'm normally not to people that I truly love and care about. So it wasn't until three months before my 30th, September, I had a really bad breakdown. Really bad breakdown. You know, things were, weren't going my way at all. My car was acting up. I was starting to really hate my job. I was hating the fact that I was still living at home um, and craving my freedom. And I was just miserable. Miserable. You know, I'm trying to talk to people. And I'm like, you guys don't understand. I'm turning 30. They're like, no, Tanya, we get it. You've been there. I'm like, no, but you've been there a long time ago before me. You know, I'm just now going through it. You went through it like 10 years ago. Maybe not 10 years, but you went through it a little, not as long ago as I'm going through it. You know, and times are different now than someone who turned 35 years ago or two years ago. It's different. We're in the middle of a pandemic and I'm turning 30, you know? Yeah, not pretty. So it wasn't until my friend Marissa's birthday party, um, she turned 30 before I did. So we're celebrating her birthday and at the end she's like, hey Tanya, listen, I need to tell you about all of this stress and issues and I was going through while we were planning this party. And part of it was because it's a party, a party you wanted to be the party of the year. But the other part was the fact that she was also turning 30, you know? And all of the feelings that she was feeling, I was also feeling. And I'm like, damn, maybe everybody was right. Maybe it is a universal thing. It's not just me. I'm not the only one that's going through that type of pressure and that stress. Everyone goes through it, you know? So it wasn't until after I spoke with her and we had our, our crying moment and I realized that, you know, I can't live my life on other people's terms. I can't live my life the way other people want me to live my life. It's my life, you know. At the end of the day, if I want to sit there and move to Mexico, find me a nice Mexican man, be a 90 day fiance, I have every right to do that. Why? Because it's my life. It's my decision, you know. According to society, by now, I should be married with 2.5 kids, white picket fence, and a dog. I got a dog. I don't even have a man to be married to. I don't have a man, once again, to have children with. And I don't have a house. So... I, I, ooh, I hate this word, but I'm going to say it. But in those moments, I felt like a failure. I hate the word failure. I hate the word fail. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. But in that moment, my self-conscious felt like a little bit of a failure. But now, I don't give a fuck. I should break that out. I'm going to bleep that out. I don't care. I don't care. You want to know why? Because a lot of people have not made it to where I'm at right now. Think about it. Not a lot of people have jobs. You know? Like, I'm in Mexico for my birthday. Look at the water behind me. Not everyone is experiencing this. Not everyone can experience this, you know? So I am being grateful for everything and every moment, every dime and every person that's in my life giving me this energy that I, I desperately needed. So we're going to wrap up our TED Talk. But there's three things I want you to do if you have ever or will be feeling the way that I felt. Step number one, talk to somebody. Don't hold it in. Don't think you're Mr. and Mrs. Superman or Superwoman and you can handle it on your own. You can, but it's so much better when you get that burden off your shoulders and have someone to help you out. Someone to talk to. Let it, let it out, you know? Scream, yell, cry, punch, fight. Maybe not fight, because I don't got bail money to get you out of jail. But let it out. Let out whatever frustration that you need to let out. You are not perfect. You will never be perfect enjoy who you are in that moment okay step two i think it was step two. Oh, step two be yourself <laughs> be yourself no matter what or who that may look like be the most authentic you you can be if that means you going skinny diving or you dropping off airplanes or you jumping into oceans naked or whatever it is be you 
if that means moving across the country to do your dream job, do you. Do you. And step three, you know, I, this should have been step one. So I'm going to make it step one. Put God first. Leave it in his hands. He has a he has a very funny sense of humor. You know, you pray for things and he will give it to you on your oh, no, sorry, on his time. Not your time. On his time. He will never do it when you want him to do it. But he will do it when he feels like you're ready for him to do it. So step one, put God first. Put all trust and faith that he will provide for you no matter what. Step two is talk it out with a friend or someone who you trust. And step three is live your most authentic life. That's all I got for you. Okay? So, until then, I'm going to go swimming. Enjoy the rest of my birthday. And I'll see you guys later.